clean this thing. No, I got three not to where it can come out and clean this all along. You still can't get that way or not? Huh? Yeah. That's waterproof tape. I thought some saving trouble on how to do it. There she is. I want to say it covered too, too. Mm -hmm. What's he staring at? Two weeks, well, I think two weeks before I go to the doctor, I have to win. Well, here you got a walking cane now. Oh, yeah, how about, about that? Hey, Penny? Hey, buddy. You all right, Cassie, don't move.
took the windshield and all that off of it. Oh, yeah. Where are you about to make it? I like that boat. What kind of get? I don't know, baby. One ounce? Yeah. Skeeter. Yeah. A skeeter. Yeah. That's a speed boat. Well, I'd cut your old fishing boat out then. Well, it's, it's a fishing boat, too. It's got the seats on there. You can take got the seats you set up. It ain't a bass boat, though. It's a speed boat, but it's got fishing seat. Talk to me about that. I don't know. I think Jim and Jimmy wanted to who? I don't know what made him decide. I don't know what made him decide to do it. I think Ray said we don't use pontoon boat to wash down our place. We just try to get good.
Don't shake it. 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 They hate me. Well, walk down there and let me see you get attacked. <laughs> I 
<laughs> They're afraid you're going to get their babies. Down the rock and cheer. That white on that house is bright, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You famine? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Just stand up there talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> he asked me if I was filming. Grandmama, she know how to rock. Did his yep. job with Fire Department? Yep. Mm -hmm. I didn't hire him. Atkins said he went to get his interview and he said they don't let him know. I hadn't thought Atkins sent. Okay. Holy 
Quit, Sandy. Oh, my hair's scratching. Did I ever get a crack of fish? Yes, sir. Oh, my 
could do too. Always something. Every time you talk to him, you got to get it on more quick. Yeah. So far this year. Oh Lord, you are, you can't count the nails out there at my house. Well, fire I know it. I, every time I see one, I doctor him up. I got mine. Hmm. So I don't 
trash man, he was out there one day, told me to see, I, told me to see if I couldn't get a new one, that lead. Well, that thing would pick it up by two and pull it out. So that's, I think the supervisor drives pick up in behind them. I had told him. So about two or three days, they brought me a new one. They last about, I think it's been about seven or eight years. Get it then, ain't it? No, your side burns were pretty forward. Had them up like that, and I just moved them out. Get it then, too. Get it thin with mine. Oh, it is. <laughs> it worked right on top. Filled out right back there. <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I think Paul, I think he was kind of thin back on the back, wasn't he? I don't know. All of us, you know, always had plenty of hair. Yeah. Mama's hair was thin. Lewis, see what he got more hair than I got now. Why up, Mama, is my hair thin? No, it's your hair. You want to sit down? Huh? I don't want to sit down. Stand up, BJ, sit down. Well, she might let you sit for a while. Chris, if you keep doing like... That ball won't let her sit down. Chris, you can wear a spoil in this bag. I already am. You want her to be spoiled? She already is. Already is. Oh, I'm saying that ain't gonna be worth chewing. Is she really small? Yeah. And they cry. And they get away, they spoil. And they, they cry and what? They cry on me. I say, look. I say, if you go cry, I'll put you in that bed. You cry in there. <laughs> well, if they start to cry, what? I'll go put them in the bed. I mean, how do you get spoiled? Was I spoiled? Yes, you were spoiled. You still spoiled. No, when I cry, when I cry, you're a spoiled little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go sit in the bed. Well, I hadn't cried lately, have I? I think you cried when you lost that game the other night, didn't you? When he got hurt. Oh, when I got hurt? Yeah, I think you were nigger. Sir? Somebody told me you lost that game where you were crying, so you wasn't hurt. Oh, I was hurt. Oh, they won that game. I twist, I twist my arm. I think, I think he was angry. He didn't want to pitch, and he go, he go play like he was hurt. Uh uh When he played the ball, went up, and my foot went like that. They lost that game. They lost that game. Fell right in the grass. I went. They lose that one. Mm -hmm. That's the game they lost. Huh? That's the game they lost when he had to pitch in. So they didn't lose to her. Uh-huh, um, had to pitch. <laughs> so it was uh, your fault. Uh -huh. They only scored three, three runs in the backyard. Sadie. Yeah. I was walking up the boy Bryant and I went. Yeah, she leaves this time. Yeah, well, oh. Terry Bryant, what was his name, Brian? We need cash bowl. Scotty, we need cash bowl. Yeah, we'll move <laughs> him up. You're a spoiled little baby. Chad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she crying because she's spoiled. <laughs> but they did swap. Leave her alone. You're spoiled. They did swap Scotty and Brian. Scotty's not playing shortstop anymore. Oh, uh, darn sure right. You're spoiled. Well, I thought Scotty played it when yeah, Brian was fishing and Brian played it when Scotty was fishing. Well, Chad and Scotty, yeah. I mean, Chad and Scotty. Yeah. Well, Scotty, when he's not pitching, he plays first now. They put Brian out there in the shortstop. He better than that, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, Scotty can't play shortstop. They won tonight. We thought they won in luck to him. He missed it. Well, now, that was Chad, but you know he didn't have his glasses. He's the one that ended up so, hitting he's that grand player. slam. He's a good player. Of course, that Scotty's a good player, too, but... That Scotty ain't playing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scotty. He missed that over the least. Chris does that.
Daí eu fiz. Eu fiz. Porque... Eu fiz. Eu fiz. Eu fiz. Eu fiz. Really, they don't hit me anymore since socks. That last game they did. Socks, socks I got every one of theirs and threw them out. Atlanta got what they came with. I only left the next day about four, about four o'clock, I guess. I don't know what was called up. Got in and stayed up. Ate supper. Went to bed, took a shower, and all went to bed about 9, 9.30. And firehouse superintendent called me up about 11 o'clock. Won't know. I had ordered air compressor. We, we'd go back, have to go back down the next day to change out some electrical breakers. We are going to lose a lot of our air. We want to keep the pulp mill and the powerhouse up, so we ordered air compressor portable. That's all poops. It was coming out of Jacksonville, That's Florida. All. And they said it'd be there around 7, 8 o'clock. They called me up. They called me up about 11 o'clock that night, and I no, I'm went to bed about 9, 9.30. Well, in case you don't film this. So they said, hey, Miss Smith, that, that air ain't out here. I said, well, I said, it's coming from Jacksonville. I said, they uh, said it'd be around there 7, 8, but it'd probably be there yeah, well. I think you better come on out here and see if you can't track it down. I said, what you want me to do? Get out and run up and down the interstate? I said, the only thing I know you do, you call Ronnie here and wake him up. I said, he's going to go out and purchase and let him track it down. I said, there ain't nothing I can do. He called me about 11 o'clock. I asked some of the shift workers about it. Next morning when I come in, some guy worked at midnight. I said, I have the bus to come in. So said, yes. Yeah. So he brought that driver probably uh, uh, got a late start leaving Jacksonville, but he might have stopped and gotten something to eat. Woo! He could have pulled there over it and was. maybe. He was on a long run or something. He just come uh -huh. in and had to bring that up there. He could have pulled over and got him a nap or something. Yeah, anything could happen. There wasn't no way you could track it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they had a wreck or something, and then oh, they yeah. notified us. Oh, they called Jacksonville. They say, well, he left here, so and so, but that's all they could have done. That's all they could have done. Well, see, I bought those like it was uh, uh, 24 in a case, you know, of all sizes. Yeah. That's where I got that little gas right. from. Don't, don't watch it before we leave. Come on. Come on, drink out of it all day till we leave. Oh, okay. All right. How about it? You got the cover on that thing. <laughs> like the booze and booze on it. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm going to get out and get my picture too now. Uh, that's enough. I've never got a hankering for covers of any kind. Put a picture of the cake up there for you. You've run out of film. Oh, yeah, she ain't gonna run out of film, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's got the date on it now. 7th, 20th, 99th, that's okay. It's a squad. No. Yeah, it's a squad. 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 Yeah. Oh, you want a soda? Yeah. Ready, can I get 
Her, take it out. Yeah, well, like, you know, the age when she was so good. She made things like a little picture they did, they can take that right out of there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I ain't getting no one. Good job. That was good. No, figure it out. They can just take it right out. Take it right out of there. Fuck up, my child. That's Connie. Yeah, okay, babe. I'll age. Hey, is he doing it on Carol's fault? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he lost weight.
Caught with riot police in Seoul. The disturbance erupted from a funeral procession for another youth, a victim of a previous clash between police and anti-government demonstrators. Let's take time now to get brought up to date on all the financial news, and for that, here's Myron Kandel at the Financial Desk in New York. Rick, a rally in the stock market has fizzled over the last couple of hours. The Dow Jones Industrial Average 
was up about eight points in new record territory just about an hour and a half ago, but it moved uh, to the downside. The Dow right now is off five and a half points and fading even more as I speak. It's at 2458.38, another day of very heavy volume, 182 million shares changing hands on the New York Stock Exchange. On the American Stock Exchange, the Amex index is up 0.41, and that takes it into new record territory. The NASDAQ Composite Index of over-the-counter stocks gaining just over one point. The bond market is down again today. The 30-year Treasury bond falling 26 30 seconds of a point, the yield at 8.51%. On the New York Commodity Exchange, precious metals a mix. Gold for August delivery is unchanged at $446.80 at the close, and spot silver gained four cents an ounce. It closed at $7.68. Oil prices soaring to a 19-month high today. Trade is reacting to an Iranian attack in the Persian Gulf on a U.S.-operated oil tanker. On the New York Mercantile Exchange, West Texas Intermediate Crude for August delivery topped the $21 a barrel mark, gaining 36 cents, selling at $21.24 a barrel. Join us tonight for Moneyline when we'll take an in-depth look at oil's recent surge. That's Moneyline, 7 p.m. Eastern. And from the CNN Business News Desk in New York, I'm Myron Kandel. Thanks, Mike. The Iran-Contra hearings are in recess at the moment. When they resume, we will resume our live coverage of those hearings. And we'll continue with this news update in just a moment. Hi, I'm Dennis Conner. Winning the America's Cup and bringing it back to America made us all very proud. While we were racing, a lot of little things made a difference. A little extra muscle, a little extra breeze when we needed it, and the refreshing little lift we got from Wrigley Spearmint Gum. If it's bold as a western sunrise and it tastes your way. Chicken for a Klondike bar? <laughs> yeah, how about you? Yeah, no pluck, no Klondike. <laughs> oh, nice chicken. For that chocolate coated ice cream, loaded big and thick, no room for six. What would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> Just a few more clucks. <laughs> Welcome back to your network of records, live, uninterrupted, gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of these very important hearings. Colonel North has re-entered the old Senate caucus room. His wife, Betsy, wearing a lovely uh, summer blue polka dot dress. There she is. Also in this audience today, Arthur Lyman's wife and son. One would imagine that law schools, deans, professors, students, have their tape machines whirring on this session because as I indicated earlier before we went to Rick for a news update this truly is a consummate matchup of legal skills Brendan V. Sullivan Jr. a Washington giant Arthur Lyman a giant from New York the skills of both men being shown here on worldwide television there's a lot to be learned from listening to each of these attorneys as well as the councils for the various committees. And that was the gavel, and we'll be watching to see what happens after this session is over. You recall yesterday, Chairman Inouye said they would be going into executive session after this afternoon's session. Whatever they do, CNN, of course, will be here to bring you the proceedings when we're able to report to you. Come to order. 
Mr. Lyman, please proceed. Colonel? Counsel? Do you remember, Colonel, that in the early morning of uh, between Sunday night and Monday morning, uh, after your interview with the Attorney General, that the alarm in your office was shred was tripped because you were there shredding. I. I don't recall the alarm being tripped, but I do remember being in the office uh, until very, very early in the morning. And uh, it's Exhibit 155, but if you remember, if you remember being there until early in the morning, uh, that's enough, and you were there shredding, am I correct? Can we take a look at the exhibit? I don't, look does at the one, exhibit say I was there shredding? No, the exhibit just says, gives your explanation of what happened, 155. I, what it is is a uh, indication from the uh, security center that uh, the alarm in my office had gone off and that uh, the alarm was cleared and I was there until uh, 04.15 in the morning. And the following morning, Ms. Brown told us that the uh, shredder was full. Does that refresh you? I don't deny that. I don't. I don't remember that it was. I'm not. I. I fully and and completely have testified, counsel, that I shredded documents. I believe right up until the morning of the 25th when I departed. Do you remember at all telling your um, your secretary at one point that you were leaving a document that the Justice Department could have fun with. I do not recall that. Do you remember... Well, on, on what day did I allegedly do this? 21st. I do not recall that. And if you don't recall it, you don't remember what the document was. I don't recall the conversation, nor do I recall the thought. I'm not denying that I said it. Those were, as you indicated earlier, counsel, difficult times. Trying to maintain a sense of humor under those circumstances is difficult at best. Now, do you recall, and I don't want to belabor this, believe me, but we have to get facts. I am here to give you the facts, counsel. Do, do you recall that on that Saturday when the um, Justice Department representatives left for lunch, that uh, you left the room with uh, Commander Thompson and with a group of documents that you had to have shred in the West Wing because your shredder was no longer working? Does that ring any bell with you, sir? It does not, but I do, I do know that I used the shredder, which was identical in the West Wing to mine, <coughs> on a number of occasions. Do you recall using it in that period? I don't, but I certainly don't deny it. And did you use it when your shredder was full and not operational? I may have. I, but again, counsel, I, I'm not denying that. I may well have. If someone said that I did, it is entirely likely that I did do that. Did you tell Admiral Poindexter that you were going to be shredding documents other than the diversion documents which you had said you had already gotten rid of? I, I don't... 
again, I don't recall specifically saying that, but I do recall assuring him on a number of occasions that I had taken care of my files, that I had shredded things, that I'd, basically the files were cleaned up. That was the basic input. I, I want to move to another topic, uh, Can I, Colonel? Before we leave that, if, if we may, counsel, I, again, I well recognize that there are certainly people who think it might have been something else, but the efforts to destroy those documents over the course of that period of time beginning in October, I never once believed to be anything criminal at all. I did not believe that anything I had done to that point was criminal, and I didn't think that it was anything other than preserving the integrity of activities and operations the lives of people who were out there at stake, the various things that I had done that no longer were relevant, some of them were history and never would be done again, simply didn't need to be exposed in any way. And one cannot be certain, in an expansive answer to your comment, that whoever came in would be chosen by a national security advisor. I'm not certain that, that one ought to, to rest with the assurance that the person that comes in to replace you shares your same values or necessarily shares the same perspective that you have on a number of things. And I'm not saying I have an exclusive view of what is right or wrong. I believe that the things I did were right, and I believe that the lives of the people with whom I worked needed to be protected. I knew that the successor that was coming in wasn't going to do that. The CIA was now back actively engaged in support of the Nicaraguan resistance and the names and the addresses and the places and the people with whom I had worked during the period of time in which the CIA was not in engaged need not be exposed by anybody. And, and I, I want you to know that that was a lot of what was going through my mind. Colonel, since you, uh, you chose to give that answer, I'm not going to leave the subject for a moment. Um, first, let me make a statement that it will probably provide no comfort to you for you to understand that we are not prosecutors here and we're not here to assess criminal responsibility. I understand that there is an independent counsel somewhere working in other offices, but you should understand that our assessment is of a different nature. Counsel, so, I understand that you're saying that, uh, but I have heard members of this committee who have said that I did wrong, that I wouldn't even need counsel, or that I wouldn't have abided by my rights under the Constitution, but for the fact that I had done wrong, and I didn't believe it then, and I don't believe it now. And are you saying, sir, that you do not believe that it was wrong to misrepresent facts to the Congress of the United States? I have admitted that, but I didn't think it was criminal. I'm not talking about what was criminal. You just chose the word wrong. Are you saying, sir, that it wasn't wrong to misrepresent facts to the Attorney General of the United States? I have testified as to what I believed to be right and wrong before, and now, you have had that, and it's now, on the record. Now, Colonel, you have talked about the fact that you didn't know who your successor would be, and that was one of the reasons for engaging in all of this activity in the days before you left office. Correct? That is correct. The one thing you knew was that people taking tours of the White House couldn't go into your office and look at the files there, right? Not without the combination of my door. And the other thing that you knew and the other thing that you knew was that the President of the United States the commander-in-chief whom you respect, revere, and I suspect love, um, uh, had asked the Attorney General to do a fact-finding mission. That's correct, isn't it? 
Actually, I don't know that Admiral Poindexter, when he told me about the fact-finding inquiry on the 21st, that he specified that it was the president who had asked that that be done, but I did come to know that. That is correct. Would it have made a difference to you in your actions if you felt that the attorney general was proceeding on the specific instructions of the president as opposed to the admiral? Would what have made a difference? That my actions Whether be any different? Yes, sir. Objection. It's a hypothetical question. Would it's you, pure speculation. You say that you were, were, were not sure whether the